It is soil blocking day. And we are new to that. I've never done soil blocking, so I'm really, really excited. I've wanted to do this for a couple years now. We are walking to go get compost to sift it and put it in our potting soil mix. So I'm gonna bring you guys along on what we're planning, how to use a soil blocker, things I learned along the way. And we're gonna give you guys updates um, along the process of like, if things take off, if they're not doing so great, just the whole rundown of soil blocking. So we're gonna go get some compost and get started. Okay, this is also our first year using our compost pile. Um, we've been getting it prepared. It's huge. This does not do justice of how big our compost pile is. Okay, can I see it, buddy? So I'm gonna just try to get in here. I'm only gonna get a five gallon bucket. Wow, it's a D2 right here. That's, it's really I think this is enough. Now let's go back and get started. So if you're anyone that doesn't know what soil blocking is and you're curious to the reason why I'm doing this is there's benefits of soil blocking compared to starting seeds in the trays. This is an experiment. I don't know if I'll continue doing this. I'm just, tr just trying it out and testing the waters to see if I really like it and if I notice a difference. Um, last year, we bought all of our plants from a greenhouse because I never seed started and I love seed starting, but we didn't have any room in our barn dominium. So I skipped that one to a greenhouse. It was so expensive. I was not happy with the plants that I got, like my cucumbers, my watermelon, they were just not strong at all and pretty root bound by the time I got to them. And I've always wanted to soil block. So I seed started some hollyhocks and those thrived, but I'm gonna talk about why I'm doing soil blocking this year. So soil blocking has a lot of benefits. Uh, number one is that it's way better for the environment instead of buying plastic trays every single year. Um, this makes it so when you buy a plastic tray with cells in it, there's no air getting to any of the sides of the plant. With a soil blocking cube, it's a cube of soil, and so the roots can get exposed to air on each side. So when you have seeds in a plastic tray, air and it almost like signals to the plant to stop growing until it's transplanted or they get root bound. So the roots just start spiraling around the plastic. When you have a soil block, the roots get exposed to air on each side and they, it signals to send roots out throughout the whole cube. So you could have a very small plant on the soil cube, but it could be a very, very healthy root system for that plant. So it's way easier to transplant something that's way stronger compared to something that's been root bound, stuff like that. And also it's much cheaper. I bought cafeteria trays, which I'll show you all the products that I'm using in a little bit, but I bought cafe trays and I can use those every single year. And I don't have to buy those. Those plastic trays are expensive if you don't reuse them. So with that being said, I'm gonna show you all the things that I'm using. Again, I'm not an expert. I'm just showing you what I've learned and we're gonna try it out together and we'll see if this works or not. Okay, first things up is potting soil. So the potting soil that I got is from Menards and I really liked the seed starter mix because two of the main ingredients within the bag is two of the ingredients I would have bought like separately and I would have had to make my own blend. So I liked that it was included in the bag. Lazy, lazy gardening tips. But anyways, um, that's the coconut coir and then the perlite in that bag. And I'm also gonna be adding some compost. And then the vermiculite is for, you can mix that in with the soil for like water and nutrient retention, or you can sprinkle it on the top of your seedlings for um, like an antifungal disease prevention. So I'm gonna be using it for the top of my seedlings. All right, so I have my soil block. I can link this in the description too if you're interested. I have a micro and then I have this, which I believe is two inches. I'll link it. Um, but yeah, I have a micro one of these. The micro is great, but you more than likely if your timing isn't right, you're gonna have to up pot these. And the micro can actually be, it can fit perfectly within this one. So this could be your one step up if that makes sense. And then, I did get some cafeteria trays, which I plan, I don't know if I have enough, but I plan on 
planting most everything individually with my seeds because I did read that all these all these seeds are gonna um, they're gonna have different germination rates so it's best to take into consideration that mixing different things one might need more light one might need to be under the soil with no light you know just stuff like that so yeah and then next up obviously is your seeds which i have a bunch here i have cut flowers and i have vegetables so i'll show you those in a little bit and then i have some popsicle sticks for labeling i have a sifter and then this you could use a paint scraper i don't think this is even going to be sturdy enough but it's for my sourdough <laughs> but i have a sifter because I do have some compost over here that I'm going to sift into this as well as this just to make it as fine as possible because when you're doing soil blocking you don't want to have like this or it's not going to hold its shape well. And then I have my handy dandy journal for just some information that I have for what each seed needs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to sift my compost in this Tupperware because all the dirt's gonna go in here, all the potting soil. And then that's when I'm gonna add water to it to get it ready for the block. I did read too that it's best to um, get the soil ready hours before you're ready to start, but you know, sometimes I'm just, I don't have the time. I have to do it now. My kids are napping. I got to get started now. <laughs> this, uh, this sifter actually is from Amazon too. And it's perfect because you can put it right on a five gallon bucket and it fits perfectly instead of having to hold it. But again, I'm just kind of winging it. Wow. That's working good. Well, that's pretty, that's pretty great. Wow. <laughs> I think I've already reached my first fail because this compost is way too clumpy and lumpy to be going through. I think this is a quarter inch. Great. Let me see, let me see. I need something like chicken wire instead of this. Can I see inside the but I saw this online and I saw this was like a pretty popular sifter. So this might take a while. probably got two cups, two and a half cups of compost in there. That's good enough for me. This is what we're working with. And now we're going to add water. And to my understanding, you want it like a putty mud that when you squeeze it with your hand, water will drain from it. So we're just going to keep adding until I feel like it's ready. Uh, it turns into mud? Yeah. Yuck. <laughs> My hands are muddy. Yuck. I thought you liked mud. I did. Yeah, I did like mud. You mean more water? Yep. Okay, now I think I'm going to squeeze it. If water comes from it, I think it's probably good. I think it might be perfect. Let's just stir it up a little bit more. And what I read is that you push it, you push it down, and then you give it a... Is it working? I don't, I don't know yet, this is my first time. <laughs> Ready, one, two, three. Oh. Okay, within a 15, 20 minute period, I just planted or made 290 soil cubes. 
Do you want to see them? Aren't they so cool? That was so easy. Okay, and like I said in the beginning of this, a lot of gardeners preference is that when you're soil blocking, each tray should be one specific variety of vegetable, flower, and to not mix things because things have different germination rates. Well, honestly, just to adding to the chaoticness of this whole experiment, I'm going to just put things and label them with popsicle sticks. I'm just gonna put like two different varieties of flower on a tray and just hope that it goes well. Here's where this could all go wrong. We don't have any like grow lights. We have one from Amazon, pretty rinky dinky. It's only gonna probably cover two trays. So we don't have any grow lights. We don't have any heating mats. We have my kitchen window and we don't have any dome. So I'm gonna use saran wrap. <laughs> so I, this could just be a complete fail, but hey, I tried. And next year we're going to have a actual greenhouse, like a hoop house. Um, so this is gonna be the last year of trial and error. I mean, next year's gonna be so much easier having a designated spot that we know is going to be good. But this this year is just, I don't know. If, if things actually germinate and thrive, I will be very surprised, but stay along for the ride. Okay, on, on to the fun part, which is seeds. So we live in Michigan, zone 6B. We do plan on having a um, farm stand by the road and I wanna do some cut flowers, maybe sell extra produce, um, firewood, stuff like that, eggs. And I'll tell you where I get my seeds. So my vegetable seeds, I'm my gardener. I'm my gardener for vegetables. So we have three different varieties of onions. We have or maybe four, no, three. And then I have some lettuce, broccoli, and spinach. Those are my vegetables that we're planting now, and it is February 26th. And we have had the most mild winter ever. Like it's been, it's like 50 some today, which is crazy for where we live. And then my cut flowers I got from Johnny Seeds and Four at Farm. So I do have dahlias in here, but I'm gonna have to up, pop the, uh, up pot those. I'm not gonna put these in before the last frost, but these I will. So I have stalks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up covering them as well. Um, chamomile, snapdragons, uh, lacy lavender blue, and sunballs and straw flowers. So that's everything that we're gonna seed start right now. All right, and here are the flowers. I think I might add these in, to be dahlias right here, but I didn't put much thought into planning of how much I was gonna plant. I just kind of winged it. So yeah, I didn't want like a ton of chamomile, so I'm only gonna do that much. But overall, I'm kind of happy with, I definitely focus more on cut flowers than vegetables, but I kind of knew that going into this project that I'm, I'm all in on flowers. <laughs> And don't mind my nasty, oh, my nasty garden hands. So for really small seeds like snapdragons and straw flowers, you can just put them in a bowl because they're teeny tiny. So I don't even know if you can see how tiny these seeds are. They're so tiny. You take a toothpick, you wet it with water, and then you can individually, you can dip it in water, and then you can easily grab a seed. Right here I have two. I'm gonna to try to stick to just one per cell, even though they might not all take off, but. Okay, we're done. That took a little bit with the small seeds, but I have some of this to put on the top lightly. Um, some of my stuff, 
like they want it about a quarter inch in, a half inch in. Some of them um, need light to germinate, so I just surface sprinkled them. But no matter what, for all of them, I'm going to put this on the very top. And then I'm gonna transfer them upstairs, give them a good mist with some water, and then the process starts. Um, the thing with watering with soil blocks is you wanna bottom water them. That's the reason why I really like cafeteria trays is that they're shallow sided, so I can bottom water and whatever excess I can drain out easily. Um, so yeah, let's sprinkle some of this and get to it. Hello everybody. We're about two weeks in on seed starting and I have quite a bit to tell you. <laughs> There's a lot that's happened. So again, this is going to be the last time I seed start indoors in our house with very little natural light. Honestly, the only natural light they were getting was this window right here and we had a very like puny grow light, no heating mats or anything. So the last thing I want is for this page to make it seem like everything is a success all the time this is definitely not a success like we're definitely having some things happening <laughs> so i had to up pot the lettuce and the broccoli because it was getting so leggy from a lack of light that you can see with the spinach right here um that it's just reaching climbing for light that it was not getting so i had to put them in these little cups that i had laying around so there's that everything else like those are getting leggy um what is those are stocks and then my dahlias the true leaves are coming in with those those aren't doing terrible and everything else is just pretty slow pretty slow like my snapdragons are the slowest out of all of them which is unfortunate because those are the ones that i really care about um but yeah Everything had a great germination rate. It's just the lack of sunlight. That's the problem. Um, we're going to go to Florida in a couple days. And my sister-in-law is taking these. And she has awesome natural light in her house. So I'm hoping that they kind of just take off at her house. But yeah, they're definitely not where I thought they were going to be. Um, but I did have low expectations. Just knowing that I didn't have what I needed to do proper seed starting in the house. But yeah, this is a two-week update. Not bad. I mean, the germination is nearly 100% on everything, which was great. Okay, this video that you're watching right now actually went viral on TikTok because everybody just loved how invested Ange was in making my dreams come true. He says he was loopy, but I I want to think it was because he was really excited to get us stuff. <laughs> but it's really sweet. It's a sweet video. He was finding random things like he found me a garden wagon, just all this different stuff. And we're very excited because all of it's going to get repainted and it's going to look brand new. So we have like a table for our greenhouse. We have all this professional racks for shelving for a greenhouse um painting it all and it's going to be amazing so i'm super excited to say that our seed starting is almost complete for this year and next year is going to be i'm going to go crazy i'm going to be planting so many things because i have all this room it's probably going to be too much <laughs> so if you guys want to see my first ever year with a greenhouse we're going to be getting it set up in a couple weeks and then it's almost garden time. So I'm going to get my garden planned. It's my our first year doing a cut flower garden and we're very, very excited. So stay along if you want to see our process for our first ever cut flower garden, our roadside stand, our greenhouse, like so many different things. And we appreciate all of you. We'll see you again next week with a new video. Bye. And that's your greenhouse right there. Enjoy.